Hello world. So in this video, I'll be discussing about a medical AI library and uh, how to get started with this library. So medical AI library is a very high level of AI framework for rapid prototyping and experimentation for uh, medical applications using AI. So it's not necessarily just for medical application. You can use it for other applications also. So this provides a very high level APIs for AI experimentation. So think of it like a, how Keras was uh, for TensorFlow and Torch in the beginning. So this is going to be like a very high level framework for TensorFlow 2.0. So now let's get started. So the first thing, so I have a Google Colab uh, notebook here. So so first thing we want to do is install the medical AI library. So this hyphen Q indicates that we have to, uh, we'll be installing it very quietly so that we don't see a lot of uh, logging. So now once it's done, so we're going to import medical AI as AI. So now, so we successfully imported it. So the first thing is to do uh, is download a sample data set. So I've already set the path to this, uh, basically uh, COVID-19 data set, which includes uh, pneumonia, normal chest X-ray, and COVID-19 images. So if you see here, like when you download, when you follow this link, if you download this archive file, so the folder is, basically COVID-19 data set 1.0 and then a chest X-ray pneumonia COVID-19 is there. So in there, we have the folder test and train, which with three classes like that, we need to uh, identify. Now, so basically you will be pointing to the folder where this test and train directory is present. So let's down go ahead and download this file and set the the data set folder path. So, okay, so now it got downloaded and uh, this is the path for this test and train folder. So, like first thing we have to do is basically initialize a data set processor. So that will basically convert uh, the data set into the format that the uh, AI network can consume and uh, train on. So basically, so since to speed up training, so and to keep the video short, so I'm going to set the image height to 64, image width to 64, and the number of output classes is three. So once we do that, so we basically call this AI dot uh, uh, data set from folder, so which basically accepts a data set folder path, so which points to your test and train directory, and then the target dimensions, which is image height and width, and then we supply even uh, another argument which says normalize equal to true. So that means it's going to uh, normalize all the images and then load data set. So by calling this function, so we are going to get train set, test set and label names. So now we see it's converting the train folder. So once it converts, so it's basically, it's caching the data set so that like if you rerun it again, if you see it will not convert again. So it will be reloading from the data set. So it basically it converts it into a NumPy file. So if you see here, so it's the NumPy file, it's a compressed, for, compressed format. So which you can uh, use it to train. So now like this train set and test set, like these, now variables have actually it's a subclass or a tick. So basically it'll have uh, data labels and few more other arguments to help the medical AI keep the code short. So if you let's see our data train set data shape. So see there are 240 samples with the 64 by 64 and three. And then our labels are 240. So let's see the test set. Uh, uh, data. So there are 60 uh, test sets. Now, now we get into the AI network building. So basically we set the training hyperparameters. So which includes batch size, 
So here we set it to 32 and the number of epochs, like how many runs we want to make uh, while uh, training this uh, model. So that's epoch equal to 10 and learning rate we have set it to a 0 0.0001. So if you can, uh, if you want, like you can not set this and allow uh, the medical AI library itself to set the initial learning rate and uh, continue to train on. And then we have selected a variable called retrain model. So retrain model basically what it indicates is let's say if you have already a trained model, so it's going to improve the model. So if there is no model available, then it's going to create a new uh, model and train it on it. Now the second parameter is model save name. So where uh, the model name which you want to save it as. And then we actually come into the medical AI specific thing, so which is the AI name. So AI name is, you can supply either a string where, where you select the pre-built or inbuilt uh, models to train on. Uh, so for example, the tiny mednet is currently uh, consisting of a uh, few convolution layers followed by dense or fully connected layers. Now there are other uh, pre-built networks, so for example, DenseNet, Inception, Inception ResNet, MobileNet, uh, uh, and then VGG16, Exception, MegaNet, and a lot of ResNet uh, types, and then TinyMed uh, types. So you can just supply a string for advanced users, so let's say you want to use a framework on a different uh, network architecture, then you can just pass a, a network init class where you define the network and supply it to the AI name so that like it'll run, it can even run on custom networks. So after we have set this parameter, so we are going to initialize the train engine. So the train engine, you just initialize it by AI.train engine, so which is a class, and we assign it to something called as uh, trainer. So once you have that, so we can just directly copy this code like trainer. Uh, train and save model. So we call this functions. So we where we set all the parameters that we initialized here. So for example, AI name, model save name, train set, and test set. So where uh, on which it has to evaluate output classes. So where we declared earlier uh, during the data set. And uh, so whether to retrain model or not, batch size, epochs, learning rate. So this is a and then uh, there are two other uh, parameters. So save best model, so which indicates that, so whether during the epoch run, so whether to select the say, uh, best model. So for advanced users, you can even uh, specify parameters to it. So and then the last one is show model. So basically whether to show the network architecture or not. So let's go ahead and uh, set this. And then let's set the trainer engine, initialize the engine. So when it says that meta, uh, when you initialize the train engine and it says meta file not found, so that means like there's no model available yet for it to load the meta file. So uh, in the uh, later section of the video, I'm going to explain what that meta file is. So now let's start the training. So just with these two lines of code, so you're going to start the training So you see here model doesn't exist. And then like, so since we set this show model equal to true, so it's going to print the architecture of the network. So it's basically three convolution layers followed by max pooling and then dense layers. So see here like it completed and the accuracy, it completed 10 epochs and the accuracy is around 87% with validation accuracy of 91%. So now let's, plot the training and loss metric. So you see like there's a gradual decrease of the loss of, uh, in training while the uh, epoch numbers increase and the accuracy improved for both of them. Now let's, now the biggest advantage of using this uh, framework is the generate evaluation re uh, report. So you might have heard about the normal like uh, just plotting the confusion matrix or like calculating specificity, accuracy, these kind of things. So it just makes it easier by using one, one function call. So trainer.generationEvaluationReport. So it will generate a PDF with 
all these sensitivity, specificity, uh, specificity, accuracy, confidence intervals, ROC, plot. So, so basically it said it's in content. Okay, now we see the report here. So let's download this report. Let's see it. So see here, so we get a table with sensitivity and specificity details with threshold at uh, 0.5. So normal class, COVID class, pneumonia class, how much is the specificity, sensitivity, positive prediction value, negative prediction value, area under curve, F1 score. So we get all these details here. So, and then we even get the details of the true positive, true negative, false positive, false negative, accuracy and uh, prevalence. So prevalence is basically the amount of uh, uh, class distribution in your uh, validation or test data set. So 33% is like basically they're all balanced. Now there's another table with confidence intervals which specifies the confidence interval for the uh, prediction area under uh, the mean area under curve for each of the con confidence intervals. And then we have the ROC curve plot, precision recall plot, and then even the confusion matrix. So we get everything with just one line of code. Now once we have it, so let's explain the model. So by sp specifying one of the samples in our data set. So we specify the first image of our uh, test set and then the layer to explain is CNN3 because if you see in this architecture here, like the network architecture here so we have uh, the layer name to CNN3 so you can play around this variable to basically explain the layers so if you see here like it's looking at the left uh, lung section in order to basically detect whether it's COVID-19 pneumonia or normal and then class names is the label names that we obtained uh, when we set the uh, data set so once like this, just one, two, three, four, five lines of code. So you can just get started with training and like basically it makes your model management and experiment manage, management easier by generating this PDF for you to evaluate. Now, so once you have trained a model, now let's assume that you want to um, use it for prediction or even take this model for uh, production. So if you see here, like the trainer generated three files. So one is the underscore arch. So basically it's the architecture and uh, the underscore weights is the weights of the model. And then underscore meta file is the file that is used by the prediction engine or the inference engine during production or uh, prediction to load even all the pre-processing uh, details of your data processor. So what happens is like when you train it, so the model is heavily dependent on the uh, input preprocessor that you applied for your data set during training. So it can be normalizing or it can be color swapping or it can be uh, channel swapping, these kind of things. So this tracks everything. And so let's initialize the inference engine by specifying the model same name. So if you see here, so the model same name is consisting of like the initial string that which we supplied to save it. So it's somewhere here, yeah, medical AI test model one. So don't supply any underscore after following this. So you just for, uh, specify this parameter. And then like we have this inference engine initialized. So now let's do predict. So all you need to do is like this, inf like we captured this uh, class, the initialized uh, inference engine and assigned it to uh, inf engine a variable. So you just call inf engine dot predict and pass the uh, data. So you'll get it in preds and then like you can apply decode predictions. So see here, so we received like the top one label is COVID-19 with 93% probability, top two label is pneumonia with 5% probability, top three label is normal and 2% probability. Now let's say you want to apply this on uh, a image 
like that can be taken from a web. So I have the ai.get file, so which is used to download uh, uh, images, files, or even uh, uh, data sets. So you supply this link and assign it to test image, and then basically use the inf engine to predict on this uh, test image link. So if you see here, it's the test image is a file path, so you're going to uh, give the file path here, and you're going to capture it. So let's try to run the model. So see, it's pneumonia is in top second place at 38% uh, probability and 42% probability. So on real world also, it's performing better, but you could still retrain it to uh, even improve the model. So now, now, let's say if you want to explain what it saw here. So during uh, production, so what you do is, so basically uh, you, when you initialize the inference engine using the meta file, it would have already initialized the preprocessor. So for example, here like inf engine dot preprocessor, so, and then process image. And we supply the path of the image, so we get the processed input. So, and then you just pass it to the explain. So which layer to explain, so don't worry about this. So if you see here, like it seems to be using the the red zone, so it's okay, but I think uh, we could uh, improve the model more. So for example, let's say if I run it, rerun it again, so the accuracy was around 87%, so let's rerun the training. So you see, it's using the already trained model to retrain it, and then we increase it to 89%, so we can still go more, 10 more epochs. So now the accuracy increased to 93%. Now let's say you want to use a different model or AI, AI network. So for example, let's say you want to use a ResNet 56, so you just set this AI name to ResNet 56, and since we are not going to change the model name here, so let's uh, set the retrain model equal to false so that uh, it doesn't load this particular model. Or you could keep it as true itself, and we could call it as ResNet 56. Now you set it, so re-initialize the train engine, and then start the training. So see here, model doesn't exist, and then it loaded the whole ResNet 56 network, and it'll start training. See here, it started training. So it's, so this library will make your life easier to train and uh, keep track of your experiments and your model performance so that you can code less and focus more on what you want to do or getting the task done. Thank you.